Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Thursday, Thursday, we're almost at the end of the week. And what a day yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Uh, anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. We've got some uh, four parts of the whole new segments on this show over here. We're going to be reviewing in little bits about the game yesterday orlando city orlando city yeah <laughs> i didn't watch the game i didn't watch the game. I was thinking, there's no way i'm going to be sent to 12 30. yeah it shows my dedication to arsenal or my lack of dedication to arsenal um also we're going to be speaking about a contract um issue with um with william saliba and uh, some thoughts from gabby martinelli gabby martinelli <laughs> I, I just hope he doesn't come and tell me that he's now turned into an agent Anyhow, anyhow, we're going to get into this one on the other side of this music intro. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel. For Arsenal fans all over this world. I've got to say, I'm not sure if a twerk for work is watching, but I'm more conscious about how I say fodder. Canon fodder. F-O-D-D-E-R, not F-F-F-F-O-O-O-O-D-D-D-D-A-A-A. Canon fodder. Anyhow, anyhow. So, I'd like to welcome back again to another live show here, uh, somewhere in the uh, UK, somewhere in London. I'm not about to tell you where, but what I can tell you is that you must subscribe to Canon Foy TV. If you want to be truly part of this community over here, do it, do it, do it, do it. Because if you don't do it, you'll be, you know, I don't know. You, you won't be part of the community if that makes any sense. Anyhow, anywho, so um, let's get into the first um, new segment of the day. And then we're not going to start where you you would like us to start. We do things the other way around. But I'm going to start with, with this. Um, do I show up this gentleman over here? Uh, yeah, I think I think we'll, we'll start. We'll start with, uh, with Gabby Martinelli. Um, Gabby Martinelli makes an Arsenal transfer admission and reveals how he has helped. Gabriel Jesus, I was thinking, please don't tell me you're becoming an agent for <laughs> an agent for, for the Brazilian uh, members at Arsenal now. But anyway, Martinelli believes that Arsenal will have an amazing uh, new season and has revealed how he has helped some of the Gunners, some of signs settle at the club. The 21-year-old uh, is now part of a growing core of Brazilian uh, players within the ranks of the Emirates at the Emirates. Jesus, Marquinhos, both joined as a new transfers in the window, uh, adding to Martinelli and again uh, Magaliangs as a South American contin uh, contingent. While Jesus, Martinelli, and Gabriel have all spoken in uh, at, broken into the first team, national team that is, there will be hopes that they can also play a role uh, in Marquinhos developing to join them as a regular in the side. Now, on the occasions of uh, his fellow countrymen, Martinelli has said it's good to have a lot of Brazilian players here. Oh, yeah, of course. Gabby, Marquinhos are new. Uh, they're good guys to have uh, them here. I have them here. All the players like them as well. Uh, I think it's uh, going to be an amazing season for us. I think they, Marquinhos and Fabio Vieira, have to learn the language. Same as me, uh, Gabby, Mag uh, Magalhães, that is, and the Gabby Jesus. We did it. They need to learn it. It is important. I thought, all right, okay. Uh, Martin, thank you for your comments there. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I, you know, I do joke, but you can see what it means when you have integrated into the life, the lifestyle, the culture. You know, in England, more or less London, and it does help when you feel part of of something. Um, you know, Antonio Reyes. You know, it was well documented that he he struggled with the life in London. He struggled, and um, it's good to hear that you know Martin is helping, you know, Marquinhos, you know, and Fabio Vieira, you know, to, to like I say transition and be part of the culture and be part of the family at Arsenal. It is a family, you know. As much as I don't agree with the things that goes at Arsenal, but it's good to see that now they've got someone who can they feel they can they can talk to. Twenty-one years of age, maturity. 
you know what I mean? But yeah, I was thinking, oh, God. Marcin, don't tell me that you're becoming an agent <laughs> for, the, for, for the players there. But well done, young sir. And also, he got on the score sheets the game last night, last night, early early doors. But I'll get into that towards the end of this, this show here. Um, what else? The other new segment I wanted to talk about was going to be about uh, William Saliba. Now there there has been just just some some comments coming from uh, Mikel Arteta, uh, and we know literally what happened to William Saliba. You know, after three separate loan spells, the most recent at Marseille, Arteta said that the 21 year old has matured, and the club are, are delighted to have him uh, have him with them. That makes any sense. Saliba's current deal actually expires in June of 2024. So he's got less than um, 24 months left on his current contract. And Arteta has admitted that the club have plans uh, to prolong his stay. Now, I do remember, I think it was Tide Ganasoros who asked the question about, you know, if I have any um, updates in regards to Martinelli's contract situation and William Saliba's uh, contract situation. Now, um, Arteta told uh, Arsenal.com, we always have a, have a plan. And when we have to execute it, that's a different story. And football is really a funny game. We're really happy to have him. And you can see the way he's adapted, the way he's matured, and he's playing well. And we are delighted to have him here. So not much in the way of, you know, we're, we're actually in negotiations now, the, the length of the, the, the contract extension. And it's just a very generic response to a question about, you know, how and when they're going to be negotiating and we're going to see William Saliba sign a contract extension. Now, there has been some talk about him um, not wanting to sign a contract extension. So I'm not going to preempt this one. Let's just wait and see. You know, any updating news in regards to Saliba sign a contract extension or not wanting to sign a contract extension, you'd be sure to hear it right here on, on Canon for the TV. Um, who else was there we wanted to speak about? I think we want to speak about... Let's see who's next. Uh, sorry about this, people. Let's make sure that I'm, I'm getting this right in the right order. I think we'll speak about, in, in, in very short terms, last night, Orlando City against Arsenal. Well done, like I said, to Martinelli. Scored the first goal, and it was, it was quite a big deflection, but I don't care. But my initial thought was they were, they were not going to give it to Martinelli, but he was awarded the goal. And then there was a goal, um, I think they scored. I, think, I can't remember who scored first, actually. I think maybe we scored, and then they scored, Orlando City. Now, I'll tell you what, <sighs> Torres, oh, my goodness. <sighs> Tavares was was possibly on the wrong, you know, the wrong side, but I think um, Torres is a pace, um, and he out-muscled um, Nuno T Tavares. But kind of cut in and even beat um it was it Pablo Mani, isn't it? And he shot the shot beat Ramza down to his uh, his left hand side. But I thought that was a quality goal. I don't think there are many defenders who could have stopped um Torres bearing down the goal and actually cutting in on his left side and to shoot down to um Ramsdale's lower left, well, actually down to his left. I thought that was a quality goal. I was thinking, oh no. Because I think it was John Nagy who sent me the highlights, the link to the highlights of the game, because I did not watch the game live. I'm thinking, no, 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 not 12.30 midnight. Nah, I had better things to do, like sleep. <laughs> so, uh, And then there was a goal by Nketiah. A little bit of a, of a, of a, of a, scra a scramble in their penalty area. And then Nketiah popped up uh, to, to score the second goal for Arsenal. And I, I was liking their little celebration, like, who, who are they trying to call? Who are they trying to call? Not, not Ghostbusters. Or maybe they're trying to call me. I need to switch the phone on. And then Reese Nelson uh, got on, also got on the score sheet. It was a, it was a nice, neat goal. Um, Reese Nelson. Now, to the guys who um, form part of the Canon Foy TV uh, uh, WhatsApp group, debating this morning, actually, you know, about Reese Nelson it, lacking confidence in himself. I think going by his reaction, I think he knows literally his time is up at Arsenal. It's a shame. I never put of the the you know, academy. I would like to have seen him play. And I remember saying this. I'll, I would have preferred to see him play on the wing. 
rather than a Nico Pepe. I think it's probably two seasons ago before he went and played for Feyenoord. That's Reese Nelson, that is. But looking at his reaction when he scored a goal there, I, I, I think his time is up at Arsenal. His time is up. Again, I didn't see... Actually, when I saw the first 11, again, looking at the um, the highlights, I thought, oh, where's, where's Saliba? Where's uh, Jesus? Where are all these players? But uh, going by the highlights, I saw they played in the second half, which is probably explain why we got the job done. So 3-1. And in, regard, go, uh, in regards to my prediction, I predicted 3-1. So I don't know, Tende, if you're watching, didn't, we, didn't I say that last night? You said 2-1 and I said 3-1, isn't it? So brother Tende, yeah. 1-0 to me. 1-0 to me. And um, just the last bit of new segment. Uh, let's have a look here. There we go. Do you recognise the person top right actually sat to the left of Edu? Do you not recognize him? Do you not recognize him? No? Well, it's, it's Alexander Zinchenko, where he did make the trip to the States. Probably won't feature in our next uh, preseason friendly game, uh, but we are waiting for the official announcement of the player being the fifth signing made at Arsenal. So um, these are uh, or have been the new segments currently running on Canon 4 TV on this uh, Thursday show over here. Um, coming to the live chat, you can probably see there's been a few comments there already, uh, early doors. Um, it's funny, now I've got time. I've got time, I'm not gonna be rushing this one. They'll probably go right up until the hour uh, and see how far we get. But now I've got time thinking now, where are ya? Where are I? Yesterday, I had like over 100. Serious, over 100 watching me any one time, just gas on about Arsenal, what, 30 minute show. Uh, where are you? Come on. Come on. Come into the live chat. And also, you can vote. The latest voting that we've done, let's see if I can have a look at it here. Yeah, here it is. Was how many more signings? Oh, bless me. Thank you. <laughs> bless me, bless me. Uh, how many more signings do you think Arsenal can get through the window? And then we did one uh, earlier this morning in regards to, to, to your man and match. Now, I did this based on what I saw. The highlights. Again, I didn't see the game live. I thought, no, nah, man, 12.30, nah, 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 no, 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 no. I'd far rather go, go to bed. <laughs> I did go to bed. So there's these two um, polls there. So let me see. Let me see if I can read them out to you. Uh, right, okay, here they are. And let me just quickly look into oh, the Twitter. Twitter feeds if there's been any comments there. All right, it's not, there's, not, there's not been one there, but it has been uh, the link to the live show been uh, retweeted by the Gunners Pub. Uh, Nuna, good morning to you, Nuna. I hope you're keeping well. I know I need to come down to the Gunners Pub and uh, have a point. Uh, on the house. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But thank you for retweeting the link there. Thank you very much. And we've got um, Ask Nick, the latest follower on our, um, our Twitter platform. Ask Nick. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So let's go into um, the poll. So the poll we did, actually, just one hour short of a day, was how many more signings do you think Arsenal will get through the door? And we have had a massive 1,100 votes. Again, guys, thank you so very much for that. 51, 51, so one above the threshold. Thank you for that. 14 comments. I've seen the comments there. Yeah, interesting comments. Uh, so these are how the numbers are forwarded. So I'm not going to re be repeating this one again, I believe. On 2%, 2% of the subscribers believe no more signs are going to be made. Well, actually, unless... Something happens with Zinchenko. You might be right, but I think you might be wrong. Uh, on tied on ten percent of the subscribers, you think one more signing and four more signings. How does that work out? I don't know how that works out. And sixteen percent of the subscribers believe that it's going to be three more signings. And on sixty-one percent, you believe you believe it's going to be two more signings. So that's it. That's it. 
And the poll that we did, I mean, just a couple of hours ago, was your man of the match. Who was your man of the match? Orlando City versus Arsenal. Who was your man of the match? And again, I based these protagonists based on what I saw. And I didn't see much. I just saw the highlights. So um, this is the list of uh, protagonists. Erdogan, Inketia, Party, Jesus, and Martinelli. So, so far, we've had 246 votes inside two hours. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so far, we've had um, Thomas Party on 5%. 9% Martin Erdegaard. 24% Gabriel Jesus. 26% Martinelli. And I'm surprised, 36% Eddie Nketiah. I'm surprised. I know some of you don't rate Eddie Nketiah, but we're, we're rating his performance against Orlando City. So, 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 so. Let's go into uh, the live chat um, for the first time on this show here. And let's see. You can already see, actually. You can already see that it's there. I'm running parallel to me. And first up, let's have a look. Uh, we've got C and War Games. Good morning, Richard. I hope you're well. He says, hey, all. Hey, all. Hey, all. This I did, or I may regret it later. <laughs> All right, twerk for work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fodder. F O D D E R. E R. Uh, Nelson did himself good uh, in his uh, cameo. Uh, Pep, however, Pepe did, however, did nothing but confirm his exit. The rise improved in the second half, but still a, a, a five. Um, let's see, so Nelson. Yeah, yeah, I just. I can understand if well, the things that I would do if I was the manager, if I was a board member, if I was an owner of Arsenal, definitely I would look to sell Nick, Nicholas Pepe and give Reese Nelson, <coughs> Reece Nelson the, the, that position there. That's what I would do. I wouldn't go into the market and, and look for a replacement. I think, much like Eddie Nketz here, Reese Nelson has not had a good run out for one season complete. To show us what he can do. He's had spits and spurts of starts, much like Eddie Nketiah. Now, Eddie Nketiah will no doubt get his opportunity in the new season. Why can't we afford the same opportunity for Reese Nelson? And I don't, I will probably say, I was saying this two, two seasons, actually three seasons ago, that he, Reese Nelson, that is, he's someone who needs an, a, a, an arm around him to say, you know what, Reese Nelson, you, you're a good player. But now, with the experience of going, going out, on loan to finals. And I did feature him two weeks ago. He, he's matured. He has matured. So he doesn't need to have that arm around him anymore. What he needs now is to be given the opportunity to play in the first team constantly. Because if we're going to afford an opportunity to certain players and they're forever going to fail us, fail us, why can't we give the same opportunity to players like Reese Nelson? who is an Arsenal product of the academy. So again, for me, it's really, really easy. Sell Nico Pepe. We're not going to get anywhere near £72 million. We'll take what we can get from the sale of him. Maybe look to sell him back to Lille. I mean, back to French... Uh, I, I, I should be a little bit silly, but to any club that will take him. And just give the opportunity that, that we gave him Nico Pepe, that we continue to give to him, to Reese Nelson. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh, a two, two, two. Okay, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, oh, the guards. Okay, uh, yeah, I thought him and Marquinhos should have started last night and given Pepe a cameo. No, I wouldn't give Pepe any more game time. I, I, I literally wouldn't. I mean, why? You wait, you're. Far rather give the opportunities to a, a, a player like like Nelson, because you know what's going to happen when you play Pepe. I wouldn't give him any minutes at all. You know, it, it, I mean, for me, it, it's done. It's done. But anyhow, there's only so much you can do, isn't it? There's only so much you can do as a, a manager or a coach. There's only so much you can do for a player. The player 
like I said, have they've got to come with the self motivation. They've got to come with that hunger and that fight. And players, whether it's through age or not, you know, you're thinking you're at a club for so long, you want, you know, a new player in a new frontier, new opportunities, new experience. It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us. But you've got to come with that motivation. If you're not feeling motivated, then you owe it to yourself to look for different pastures. And I'll say this again, you know, Project Pepe ha has come to an end. It's come to an end. But I'm looking at Reese Nelson. I'm thinking, surely you can give him the opportunity now. You know, if you've got a, a player who said, literally, you know what, at that time in, in the January transfer window, because I thought, oh, it's going to be a sure start to leave. But he, he stayed with us. And then he's saying, oh, you know, I want to wait until the end of the season. And then he, he wants out. He wants out. So don't try and force players, obligate players. I, just, I know they are our assets. But if you've got other players who are willing to play in that position, surely you should be playing the, those players in those positions who want to fight for the badge. And every time I see Nico Pepe, you know, his body language, to me, he just doesn't want to play for Arsenal. So... I don't know. Is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as that? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it is a real shame. And even the price tag, I don't, let's not talk about the price tag, but surely whatever price we've, we've paid for this particular asset, you've got to give us the returns that we've invested in you. And we're not getting the returns. But just It's just not happening. It's like, you know, back in the day, I remember my, my, in my parents' house, they used to have a, a, an old boiler and the pilot light used to go out. I think, oh my goodness. So they, okay, I'm going to be the one to try and get the pilot light, you know, fired up. And Nico Pepe is like that. The little pilot light, you want it to get into a massive flame of, you know, of, of passion and, you know, and, you know, motivation. And it's just not happening. That pilot light is just a small pilot light. And the pilot light is about to burn itself out. Boom. Get a new boiler. That mom and dad buy a new boiler. <laughs> Get a new boiler. So you don't have to keep calling me and saying, oh, you know what? The, the, we haven't had hot water. What? I don't know. The pipe like went out. And with, you know, your dad doesn't know how to do it. So you go, oh my goodness. So bless my, you know, my, my father's since passed away. But ah my goodness. Yeah, all right, dad. This is how you do it. Yeah, all right. Okay, all right. <laughs> dad, buy a new boiler. Anyhow. Anyhow, anyhow. Uh, so come into the live chat. I want you to come in the live chat and I want you to comment. Questions, observations, <laughs> any ranting, but keep it clean. Keep it clean. I don't have any moderators um, as yet. I, no, I don't. I think the bubble was still sleeping. The bubble was even Ashley D is probably sleeping. Or maybe he's out cut, cutting the grass. Yeah, he's a, he's a groundsman. Cuts the grass. I don't, I'm not sure where. So come in the live chat. You know, let's discuss, let's say, debate, exchange thoughts, opinions, but keep it clean. Keep it clean. Um, there's been, been any other comments on our Twitter Twitter feed. Oh uh, yeah, they, they need to learn from last season episode. That's right then. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna feature this one. I know uh, John Aguizu Gun is not in the live chat, as far as I'm aware. But John, if you are watching, I want to read out your comment you've made uh, on uh, on Twitter. You said that yeah, I agree. They need to learn from last season's episode. No strike and injuries cost us a uh, Champions League spot. <coughs> and someone's responded. I'm not gonna read out their handle. They said, for sure, I mean, with a decent centre forward, even one goal against a poor uh, time-wasting Burnley side at home would have been, um, would have seen us get to top four. Incredible to think uh, of that. Uh, boy, that game was boring and frustrating. Um, yeah, I mean, history, last season, the season before that, and before that, there were lessons to be learned there if we are willing to learn the lesson. Because if we're not, you know, history is going to keep biting us. I said, look, you need to learn the lesson. You need to learn the lesson. I've shown you something. You need to learn the lesson. But, yeah, for, for sure, we need an additional striker. You know, I do tend to feel, I've got a funny feeling about this, 
that in in Keta might out outgun Gabba Jesus. And it was good to see, you know, when they celebrate they celebrated together when Keta scored a goal. Who who are you calling, man? Are you trying to call me? Because they ain't answering no form, phone, man. Now don't try and call me. But competition. You you want competition there. But I still get the feeling that we need an additional striker. God forbid if one of the strikers were to get injured. We need a backup striker. So whether they're going to use Balogun, which I don't think, I think maybe he'll be put out on loan again. But we need an additional striker. Could it be, I don't know, Martin at his time? Could he get fired up? Could he? Fly. <laughs> Could he get fired up and score the goals? An equal Saka on the right-hand side. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's his time again to show that he's got quality. He's a good player, but he's not a great player. Martelli, I'm talking about. He's got so much to prove, a lot to prove yet. Age 21. Okay. <clears throat> um. What's I going to do? Oh, I was going to refresh that page. Here. Sorry, <laughs> I kind of lost my my bearings. All right. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to refresh the the page where we've done the um, the voting. The voting is and has form uh, as so. So your man of the match. Who was your man of the match versus um, Orlando City? And I got to say that goal that they scored. Torres, I thought that is a quality goal, man. I was thinking, wow. He kind of outpositioned Nuno Tavares, which is not, you know, a, a difficult thing to do. But he outpaced him. He cut inside, went past <coughs> Pablo Mani quite easily. That's another player we need to sell. And scored. The goal was a quality goal. I was thinking, wow. Down to Ramsdale, you know, left. Bottom left. But yeah, that was a quality goal. But anyhow, anyhow. So your man of the match, I've gone by what I saw the highlights because I did not see the game from minute one to minute whatever it was. Um, I put a list of Erdegaard and Ketia, Party, Jesus and Martinelli. 261 votes. There's not been any comments yet because I only did this like less than two hours ago. Six likes. Let's aim for 70 likes on this one. On 5% is Thomas Party. Let me know how Tom, how did Thomas Party play? Did he play all right? He didn't, he didn't start the first half, did he? <clears throat> now on 10% is uh, Erdegaard. On 22% is Jesus. 25% is Martinelli. And still out in front. I'm surprised. No, it's this way, isn't it? Um, what am I doing this for? <laughs> it's this now, isn't it? And it's not even this. It's like this. It's this, and it's this. We don't do this anymore, do we? The doll. You know, those who are old enough, you know what I'm talking about, man. And what happens? You make a mistake. You go, oh, I've got to start all over again. Oh, one, three, five. <laughs> make another mistake. Oh, my God. I've got to put the receiver down. The receiver down and make the call again. Oh, one. Three. Oh, those were days. Those were days, man. Oh my goodness. <coughs> All right, let's go back into the, into a live chat. Uh, I'm so mischievous this morning. Really, really mischievous. I don't know what's come over me. Uh, okay. Uh, Richard says I agree. Thanks and goodbye, Nicholas. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen enough of him now. I've seen enough. Des, good morning, Des. Says, uh, morning, Alex. Uh, we still need a, a left-back uh, defensive midfielder and a different kind of striker to Jesus, I've said. Um, I think, Des, you did mention to me who you would like um, as an alternative striker, something different to, somewhere different to uh, Jesus. Remind me, who do you, who do you, so you would like, I'm trying to, was it, it's not Savage. Um, I forgot, I've forgotten, I've forgotten. Remind me, remind me, remind me. Uh, Zinchenko, just a, a few bits to do before he's out officially, uh, probably see him uh, against uh, Chelsea. I, well, I think it's touch and go. 
But I, what I don't want Arsenal to do is just draw it out. You know, he signed the, the, the medical, past the medical, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't have been in the stadium with the, the picture I showed there. Actually, let me show the picture again. Uh, where is he? Where is he? There he is. Yeah. So don't draw it out. Just get it announced. Boom. Yeah, sign the contracts. You know, and it's probably done the videos, the promo videos, all everything there, the, the photo shoot. Just get it announced so we can move on from this. And cynically, I did mention, was it last week or week before? Would you like to see Arsenal have an official spokesperson coming out at least three times a week during the tr transfer window and just giving, up, giving us updates? Again, it does not have to be Mikko Arteta. I would like it to be Edu, but why can't we have a buffer in you know, a, a, an official spokesman coming out at least three times a week to let us know What's happening with the transfers? Is it true that Arsenal again, you know, after this play? Just to snuff out all the rumours and the speculation. But, yeah. Um, I don't think we'll see him play against uh, Chelsea. I don't think so. But if we do, it'll be good. It'll be good. All right. Um, la, 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 la. It's a five. Five, 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 five. <clears throat> it's scary how uh, they got behind our defence in the first half. Well, Des, again, I only saw the highlights because I thought there's no way I'm staying up 12, 30 midnight to watch. Uh, 90 minutes. Ah, no. So I went to bed before, I think it was just, just before 11. So I didn't see it. But um, that one time I saw they got behind the, the, the back line, which is why I say that we need a central defensive midfielder. I know, I think, did El Nene start? I think he did, didn't he? But anyhow. He controlled the game. Well, then why is it they've only given him five? Five percent of their subscribers have gone for Thomas Party. It's, it's funny, isn't it? It's not funny, it's interesting because you think... Right, because he scored, we'll go. We'll go for for him. And Ketia scored, right? And that's why thirty six percent of the subscribers have gone for an Ketia. But what about the other people who do the dirty work? Huh? What about the people who do the dirty work? You know, providing some defense and the assist. It's very rare you see literally a a player who does really good defending and assisting will will win a vote here. But yeah, he's only been given 5% CM. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. One. Three. Oh, no, not three. Put the receiver down and start all over again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, that's right, Patrick, Patrick Schick. Yeah, yeah, all right, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Charles, good morning to you. He says, um, Skamaka is, um, is it Skamaka or Skamacha? It's with a double C, isn't it? So is it Skamacha or Skamaka? He is a big boy. He's quite strong, very skillful in the build-up, but a striker, I, I, you know, if I'm going to be buying a striker, I'm paying him to score, as well as helping him to build up and little flicks. And, and from what I saw, the only time I've ever seen him play was against England, the friendly. I thought, well, not friendly, it was um, the Nations, isn't it? The Nations uh, Cup, whatever it was called. But not enough. Well, from what I saw, I think, yeah, the guy, he can he can, he can play, but he got, got to score the goals, man. Got to score the goals. Um, I do probably, do I need to do an update on him? Because the last time I heard, West Ham were wanting to buy um, yeah, Gianluca Scamacha or Scamacca. Should have been good to see uh, Zinchenko at halftime and with the shirt on the pitch. Uh, we need to replace Thomas uh, Thomas <laughs> part-time party. I've never been to a part-time party before. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, it was more the pressing from the front uh, in the first half or was poor. Aye, all right. 
we press in one or two uh, second half, we press as a team, as a team, as a team, as a team. Right, people. Okay. So come on, come on, more people. I see there's uh, 14 of you watching now live on this Thursday show over ear, over ear. Uh, let's see if we can refresh the page here. Uh, I will go for a few more minutes, read a couple more uh, comments in the live chat, and then I will repeat the news of today from Canon 4 TV's perspective. I've just refreshed the page to see uh, how many more votes have we got. And we've got now 275 votes. Uh, your man, the match, but the numbers have remained the same. Although in Ketia have got has gone up uh, one percent to thirty nine percent. Was it something I said? <laughs> Was it something I said? <laughs> okay. See, more game says uh, Tony or Watkins. Tony for me, got speed and heading ability. Won't cost us much money. Was uh, Watkins only Watkins? I think will, will cost us a lot of money. Will cost a lot of money, but yeah, I'm, I've always said I would prefer Mr. It, Mr. Ivan Tony. I'll go for it. What about yourself, Richard? What about yourself? Orlando City uh, played well, uh, to be honest. Yeah, that little bit I saw there, I was thinking, wow, my goodness, they're, 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 I don't know, man. And then you look at Everton, Everton probably need to be promoted to the MLS, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> was it 4-1 wasn't it anyhow anyhow um i've got to do something on the channel i need to make a tweak which might take two minutes so don't go anywhere just bear with me a second i've just noticed something that i need to do on on the, on the channel in the background so just bear with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna play um this video just to um yeah I need to make a quick tweak to the um the code on the channel. So if you bear me a second, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
okay, I do apologize for that. I had, again, I had to make some 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 modifications to the coding on on this slide and um, over here, and it's, it's been done now. So we're back. We're back. Let's just see if there's been any more comments on the live chat, and then we will repeat the news of today from Canon for a perspective. So CM says, uh, uh probably Tony. Why Ivan Tony? <clears throat> why, 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 why? Why Ivan Tony? Okay, so whilst uh, Richard is uh, contemplating my question, why Ivan Tony? Uh, let me re repeat the news today in a, in a shortest uh, form. Uh, we can this one. We're going for 40 minutes and counting. So, um, first up, I think we'll, we'll talk it in, in reverse order. Um, we'll put this one up. I'm begging your pardon. There we go. Right. So, uh, William Saliba, um, apparently, um, the manager's given just like a little insight into the contract situation uh, with, in, especially in regards with uh, William Saliba. Now he told um, Arsenal.com that we are all, we always have a plan and when we have to execute it, that's a different story. And football is a, it's really a funny game. We are really happy to have him. And you can see that uh, the way he, he has adapted, the way he's matured, he's playing well and we are delighted to have um, him here. Uh, Saliba's contract, current contract expires in June of 2024, so he's got like just short of um, two years left. And Arteta has admitted that the club have plans to prolong um, his stay. Uh, any more updates in regards to his contract situation, we'll be sure to hear it here uh, on Canon um, for the TV. Um, we also spoke about, uh, so look here, this, this youngster here, um, Martinelli. I'm so happy for that he scored uh, last night. Was it last night? Uh, earlier, earlier today, earlier today against Orlando City. A big deflection, and I thought uh, maybe they probably wouldn't give it to him, but he was awarded the goal. But on something different, Gabriel Martelli uh, makes Arsenal transfer admission and reveals how he has helped uh, Gabriel uh, Jesus um, kind of settling at Arsenal. Now um, he said. Um, on, actually, on the additions of his fellow countrymen, Martin said that it's good to have a lot of Brazilian players here. Gabi and Marquinhos are new. Uh, they're good guys to have uh, have them here. All the players like them as well. I think it's going to be an amazing season for us. I think they, Marquinhos and Fabio Vieira, have to learn the language. The uh, same as me uh, and Big Gabi, Gabi Magalhães and Gabi of Jesus. We did it. They need to learn it. It is important. And I actually said, going on from that, you know, you can see how Lucas Torreira, you know, just couldn't adapt to the life, you know, the language. It just couldn't adapt. And it is important to assimilate yourself into the culture. You have to learn the language. You have to learn the language. There's no there's no getting away from it. Uh, then we spoke about <laughs> the game. The game, Orlando City versus Arsenal. And there was no way I was going to stay up, local time it is, 12.30 a.m. to watch the game. I said to my wife, you know what, I'm off to bed. She goes, all right, bye. <laughs> She said bye bye. <laughs> oh dear me! So I didn't see, I didn't see the game. I, what I did see was the highlights, and the link to the highlights was um, generated, actually given to me by uh, John De Giza Guna. So it was a three-one to the Arsenal. Martinelli scored, uh, and Kitsia scored, and Reese Nelson scored. I did mention that uh, the goal that Orlando scored for me was a top-class goal. Now, I know we've had this question mark about Nuno Tavares. Not a left back, he's a wing back. But Torres, how he, I don't know how he found himself in that position there. But Tavares has a turn of pace. But even then, he couldn't catch up with Torres. But then Torres kind of cut inside, went past um, Pablo Mani very, very easily, and shot down. Ramsdale's a low, uh, actually that low into uh, the left and corner. What a quality goal. Really good goal. In addition to that, I was very, very happy for Martinelli, very happy for Inketia, and of course, very, very happy for Reese Nelson. Although going by his reactions, I think he knows he's probably going to be on his way out, which is a real shame because I'll gladly, gladly sell Nicolas Pepe and have Reese Nelson play in that position there out on the right hand side. I think we'll probably get a lot of more production, productivity from Reese Nelson than we have seen from uh, Nicolas Pepe on a consistent basis. 
And last but not least, you can see the uh, on the verge of being announced, uh, Alexander Zinchenko made his way to the States. Um, probably won't feature in the Chelsea game, but we are awaiting the official announcement of the player being the fifth signing they made in this transfer window. But for me, it is still a steady five out of ten for the transfer window. Still a five. Sorry, people. It's, it, it is still a five. All right, for the last time into, into, into the live chat, uh, CM says, I will say uh, the work Saliba did off season has put him in a strong position. He looks at beast mode. Mode. Saliba um, needs to start the season so strong. Uh, we will get more goals and more of a, of a handful at set pieces. Watkins is particular. Is pacey, so particular. Is pacey and drifts all over the place. Tony will give us a way out uh, of the press. <coughs> a different uh, way means those difficult teams uh, like Burnley last season. Uh, we would have different uh, ways to score. Uh, there was one hour thirty minute delay due to a thunderstorm. Oh, right. So good thing I didn't wait up. It's a good thing I didn't wait up. Talk, talk. Oh, right. My goodness, man. Oh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> I won't be watching the Chelsea game then. <laughs> um, right. So, uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, uh, about, uh, oh, this is what I was going to say. There's, there's two things, actually. One thing I want to say last week, and it kept escaping my mind because I had so many things responding to the questions and that gave him my, give my rant. So let me tell you, tell it now before I forget. Someone mentioned about Emma Smith Rowe that they the the concern about about him. I'm also concerned because in the games that we've had, he's not played, has he? He's not played. So if we have a Fabio Vieira, we've got a, a, an emergence of a Erdegaard in the midfield, and we're probably looking at a never midfielder, possibly Tillemans to be the sixth sign, and possibly, but it's a, it's complicated. It's not straightforward. What happened? What then happens to to Emma Smith Rowe? What happens to him? Is he going to be another player, much like uh, Omar Hutchinson is going to get fed up? I think you know what. I know I've suffered some injuries, but I've been fit. You've not played me, so is he going to be another player that's going to be off? So I am worried about Emma Smith Rowe. I'm worried about him. I don't. I, I have not seen any latest news about Smith Rowe. Actually, you know what? Let me. Refresh my uh, my 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 news source page. Let's very very see very very quickly. Uh, okay, so he has mentioned um, why it's important to to have signed uh, certain players. So I think what I'll do on the you know on on another live show, I will talk about. Smith Rowe in a little bit greater depth, but I'm worried about him, man. I'm worried about him. Um, the other thing I want to say is that okay, I get it. We played against another Premier League team, albeit it was <laughs> in the States, Everton. But is that going to be the measure of how we're going to play in a season? No, it's not. It's not because we have still yet to have more signings. Now, I'm hoping that Arsenal will get the 6-1 over the line in the shape of Yuri Tillemans, although I prefer that we went in the market for a central defensive midfielder. So there's still a question mark as to how many more signings and who we get if we get any more over the line. But playing against Ipswich over here, playing against Everton, a Premier League club who just survived the drop last season, and against Orlando City, they're going to be sterner tests up front when we get back into the season of the Premier League. So again, there's so many elements literally needs to be tied down. And that's why I said, don't leave it so long to announce Zinchenko. Get it over the line, go after the next target. If it's not Yuri Tillemans, go after the next target. Go hard and go fast. If it's Leroy Sane, go and get Leroy Sane. If it's not him, go and get somebody else. Somebody else who's going to be a sure start, sure starter in the first team. We, I mean, uh, how many times can I say this? We've got enough people. We've got enough youngsters. We've got enough 
in that part of it where you're thinking, oh, the player's not for the here and now. Now go and sign players who are going to be for the here and now. Starters in the new season. Because, you know, we the comment I read there about, oh, you know, playing at Burnley and all the games matters. Everything matters. They say ignorance is bliss. It's not bliss. Everything matters. How you speak to the players, your, your recruitment, everything matters. So get the players, sign them in as quick as possible. I mean, look at William Saliba. The guy was almost the first person over to Gabby, um, Gabby Jesus when he scored the goal against Everton. Almost the, the first player. So you want them to have the camaraderie. Yeah, the, the, the family, the unit, the bonding. You need that. So Zinchenko, most likely, you know, he's passed his medical. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been in the stadium sat next to Edu. He'll probably think, you know, you didn't pass your medical, man. Go away from me. You haven't passed your medical, so we don't need you here. But know that he has. So don't draw this one out. Get it announced quick as possible. Move on to the next target or next targets. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I think uh, Emerson Roy has taken a knock. All right, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, Parun, uh, good morning to you. Uh, says we need a Victor or uh, some man. It costs a lot of money to, to invest a lot of money in one player. I'd far rather, you know. Yeah, for, find two players for that same price because I, the last video I did on, on Victor, 80 million euros. I'm thinking not for one player. Not for one player. What is he? What is he? Um, he's injured. There we go. Ferocious um, says, um, what is happening with Afsani? <sighs> To be honest, I don't I don't think I mean he's spoken about his admiration and his time when he was the coach at Man City. But we're talking about between 50 and 60 million pounds for Leroy Sani. And jokingly I said, <laughs> Jesus, if anyone can, Miko Arteta can. With Zinchenko, if anyone can, Arteta can, because of the connection he had when he when he coached Man City. So I'll say with Leroy Sane, if anyone is interested, if anyone can, it's most likely Mikko Arteta because they have that connection there. They Again, Sane spoke about how he helped him uh, con concentrate and go to the next level. So if we are serious about Leroy Sane, let's go and get him. Let's go and get him. But if we are serious, I just get the thing that we are not serious. I think Tillemans has agreed terms. What he has, there is a gentleman's agreement, but um, it's complicated, Des. It's very, very complicated. There is a behind doors uh, game uh, before Sevilla, uh, Sevilla uh, planned. Uh, is Sane uh, choosing Real Madrid or Arsenal? And how do you know? Well, I've got my sources, reliable sources. That's how I know. That's how I know. Uh, Paul says, uh, we need a target man in the box. We need another striker. I agree with that. I agree with that. I would like, uh, I would have liked to have signed a Gnabry. The wages, there's, the wages would have been astronomical. So we don't want to get rid of the likes of an Aubameyang and Ozil for us to be back in the same situation where players are going to be demanding high level of wages. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Uh, last few people, last few comments, and I don't want to. I want to wrap this one inside uh, an hour. We're on fifty-five minutes, and actually, I think what I'll do, I think I might <coughs> read out the last comment, and then we'll call it uh, to an end. We need a player like Tillemans in the central uh, midfield to to partner party, partner party. Yeah. So we're gonna party to partner party. Uh, Katie, good to see you back in the live chat. Uh, right. Um, we have come to an end 
uh, on this show here. Thank you to all of you, um, sorry, you for watching me talk over here. Uh, I will be back. I will be back. Um, look out for uh, two videos come up later on. Uh, actually, late on before before it's midday. Actually, yeah, because we're we're stopped on on the hour. Yeah, we have. I don't know how I did it. And um, I will be back uh, later on. So you know, have a have a a, a wonderful. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's probably your 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 evening, depending on which part of the world you are from. It could be your early, 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 early morning, which means you're probably sleeping. Or you're somewhere in the middle of me. I'm just trying to use that dial-up phone, man. Oh, one. Oh, drat. Put the phone down again. The, rec the receiver. Put the receiver down. <laughs> Pick it up. Oh. D -d 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 -d. One. D -d 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 -d. Do you remember that sound? D -d 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 -d. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Thank you for joining me on the show here. I will be back, believe it or not. I should be back. No, I will be back later on today. But, um, yeah, yeah. Give me some more uh, live news. And, um, yeah, to continue to vote. To remember the vote that we did, you know, who was your man of the match? Orlando City. Was it these two? Last trying to use a dial-up phone? Or was it the gentleman who, like, scored a goal and, like, okay, I think he's probably going to be leaving. Reese Nelson, he'll be leaving. Uh, until then, uh, we're finished, uh, and I'm out of here. Um, and this has been Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.